Yeah, so uh, today the chapter that we are going to discuss is uh, factors and uh, it's uh, we I think all of us have been working with factors in some sense or the other. Uh, it basically uh, means that uh, it's basically uh, refers to working with categorical variables, uh, especially when uh, we have fixed and known set of uh, possible values that uh, a variable can possibly take. And R really handles uh, categorical variables uh, pretty well. Uh, so it, uh, a lot of R functions basically uh, convert uh, characters to factors automatically. Uh, so that's a really useful uh, function. However, a uh, slight disadvantage is that it can, uh, uh, you know, factors can uh, crop up at places where they are not useful and uh, tidyverse has uh, ways of dealing with that. Uh, so that's, that's what we are uh, going to majorly discuss today. Uh, this chapter is divided into three uh, main operations that one can do with factors. Uh, first, starting with uh, how to create factors. Uh, followed by how to modify the orders uh, of the levels in a factor and finally modifying the factor levels uh, themselves. Uh, for today, I could cover uh, the first two uh, operations, uh, which is to create uh, a factor and to modify the order of the levels in a factor. Uh, so we'll, we'll cover that today and uh, in the following session, uh, we can cover the uh, exercises and how to modify the factor level uh, themselves. Uh, does that work for everyone? All right, I can't see Yes, this. I think this chapter deserves uh, some more sessions too. So I yeah. think it's okay. Nice, nice. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Carrying on, uh, we start talking about uh, how to create factors and uh, the chapter essentially talks about the challenges with using factors and uh, it takes the example of, you know, if we have a, a vector of characters, uh, let's say we are uh, trying to record months and we have December, April, January and March. Uh, there are two major problems with uh, using or, or kind of specifying your levels uh, like this. Uh, the first one being uh, that these, these these months or these levels are not standardized. So if I mean if you're trying to do that time and again, uh, you can be prone to typos. And the second uh, major disadvantage is that when we sort uh, such a vector or when we sort such a variable. Uh, it would always sort in either uh, ascending alphabetical or descending alphabetical orders, which which might not make a lot of sense uh, to us. Uh, this these two challenges are majorly solved through factors, uh, and uh, this is essentially how uh, we create factors, uh, which is uh, like one of the ways to create factors is to first specify the list of all the levels that your variable can take. Uh, in this example, uh, we are trying to create a variable that uh, captures months. So we are first creating a vector of all the possible uh, levels, uh, in this case, all the possible months uh, that, that our variable can take. And then uh, we kind of uh, use this vector uh, within the function factor uh, and say that, okay, factor, uh, sorry, And uh, so we say that factor x1 uh, and specify that the levels would be uh, month underscore levels. Just to recap, x1 was uh, this uh, vector right here. So we have a vector that contains four different uh, characters. And now we are saying that, okay, convert that vector into a factor. And uh, that factor can take levels from this. Uh, list of levels that we have already created. Uh, the advantage of uh, using uh, factors or, or the advantage of specifying levels in this way is that we'll never make any typos. So uh, 
the levels are already specified. I mean, once we have uh, these characters uh, set, if we have not made any typos in specifying the levels here, uh, we will not have any uh, any, any typos uh, in any of the following variables that come. And sorting becomes more meaningful. Uh, so if we have uh, Y1, where we have uh, kind of specified uh, the month in a specific order of January, February, March, uh, sorting that variable would uh, be meaningful. It would uh, be sorted in the same order in which the levels were specified. Uh, so January um, followed by March, followed by April, followed by December. Uh, and as you can probably imagine, we can now uh, do a lot of uh, uh, play around, you know, how these levels are ordered. Uh, we can we can figure out different ways of reordering these variables to use in visualizations or in our analysis uh, and things like that. So that's a, a very short summary of how to create factors and, and uh, the advantages uh, of, of using factors. This is followed by a few other nuances uh, of, of uh, factors. The first one is uh, that any value that is not in the list of levels that we had already specified would be silently turned to NAs by uh, the factor function. Uh, so let's say we had X2 uh, where we had misspelled uh, January. Uh, if we take X2 and specify uh, levels, uh, Y2 will never uh, show the, I'm sorry, I, I should have included uh, how Y2 looks. I can do that. Can you, do you see my uh, presentation? Uh, I'm seeing your R console. Oh my, oh my God, I was, uh, okay. <laughs> I was talking, and looking at my presentation all the way. Uh, but let me quickly recap here. Yeah, so uh, some of the other nuances here are, uh, I mean, we were take, uh, taking a look at uh, this X2 vector where uh, we had misspelled January and we saw that if we uh, specify X2 with uh, the month levels that we, uh, we're working with, uh, we have uh, this this kind of, uh, this this uh, typo, so to say, uh, is not included in the list of uh, month levels, uh, the vector that we had specified earlier. Uh, and since it is not included in the list of, uh, in, in the levels that we have specified, it would silently be turned into uh, a, a not applicable vector. And uh, just to, so that yeah, so we had x two and we we now convert uh, uh, try to create a new variable called y two. Y two will have uh, an na in, in in the place where there was a typo. So so that's that's how this works. Uh, if we want to see uh, the warnings, then we have to use this. A function called parse under underscore factor, uh, which uh, essentially uh, shows the warning that uh, hey, this is uh, there's some element in the vector which does not have a corresponding uh, list in the levels. So, so that's I mean, in case we are interested in the warnings, we can we can use that. Uh, another cool feature is. Uh, that if we omit the levels argument, uh, just to go back real quick uh, here, uh, we had X1, uh, which is December, April, January, and March. And uh, the, the, the way that we discussed, uh, we specify these factors is to say factor uh, call on X1. And the next argument is where we specify the levels uh, that we had just created. Uh, if we forget to add that level or if we omit omit that levels argument, uh, what R does is that it uh, uh, it takes the levels as they appear in the data in alphabetical order. Uh, 
so for example my data uh, uh, the the variable x1 has uh, december april january and march uh, it considers these four as the level and it it kind of treats them in an alphabetical order so april comes before december comes before january comes before march and so on uh, so that is uh, that's what happens if if we omit the levels argument uh another uh point to note here is uh is when we want to order uh want the order of the levels to match the order of appearance of that category in the data so let's say uh in my uh data in my vector uh, i have this specific uh level uh, or this specific order of uh character so december comes before april comes before january if i want to preserve uh, this order uh, there are two ways to do that uh, the first option is to use unique so uh, say that factor x1 and levels is unique of uh, x1 so it uh, essentially this unique x1 is essentially converting all the uh, all my factor into its unique levels and uh, it retains the order uh, in which the variables appear in the data so here we see that uh, it's not alphabetical anymore it's it's december december april january march uh, the second way to do like uh, retain uh, the order uh, of levels is to use uh, factor underscore in order function uh, this does the same thing uh, all we do is uh, x1 pipe factor pipe factor in order and uh, the levels that uh, uh, gets considered by r is the same levels that are uh, there in the data and in the same order in which they appear in the data so it, it retains the level in that way and finally uh, in this section uh, if we explicitly want to access the set of valid levels in a in a particular variable if we if we if we are given a variable and we want to see what levels uh, it consists of we can simply use the levels function so levels f2 would give us all the all, all, all the same levels that we just saw a moment before so uh, that is uh, all about creating new factors and uh, some specific nuances uh, related to that uh, next we move on to the idea of how to modify the order of uh, of of uh, the levels as they appear in in our factor and uh, this is especially helpful when we are uh, changing the order of uh, when we are kind of using uh, factor variables in our visualization for example we uh, are using a factor variable in a bar plot and we want it to want the different factors to appear in a specific order so that the functions that we learn in this particular section are uh, especially useful in that context uh before we proceed we uh, will be working with the general social survey data set uh, which comes with the four cats package within tidyverse and it has uh, it has a number of different variables quite a few of them are categorical we have year marital status age race income uh, party id uh, religion uh, denominator Uh, number of hours that they uh, watch tv and so on and so forth so uh, it has uh, these nine uh, variables and we'll be working with this data set quite a bit uh, as we proceed to the next sections uh, so a, a quick example where we may need to reorder uh, levels so we uh, we consider the gss uh, data set and we are uh, we are summarizing that data uh by uh, we are grouping it by religion so different uh, types of religion and we are summarizing the data by computing the mean age and the mean tv hours uh, that people of of a particular religion uh, watch in a day uh so we have uh, all these different religions so we have 15 different uh, religions that are covered in the data set and we have a uh, mean age uh, mean uh, number of tv and uh, the number of cases that we have uh, in each group 
uh, if we wanted to plot uh, uh, TV hours versus uh, religion, uh, we would do something like this, where we where we use uh, geom point to have uh, TV hours on the x-axis, religion on the y-axis, and uh, you know each point specifying the average number of TV that. Uh, people in, in, in belonging to that religion watch. And uh, this is quite, as we can see, this is quite haphazard. It's, it's really difficult to draw inferences uh, from this kind of a graph. And it would be really useful if we could kind of have some order uh, to it to, to make quick inferences. And this is where uh, factor reordering uh, comes into uh, play. Uh, uh, and and uh, there are there are many different ways in which we can reorder the levels uh, of a factor, and and this book talks about four uh, different ways, uh, different functions. The first function is factor reorder. Uh, the second function is factor relevel. Uh, the third function is factor reorder two, and the fourth function is factor uh, in frequency. And uh, we'll talk about each uh, one of these uh, in in the coming slides. So back to our example, uh, uh, what if we try to reorder the levels uh, or, or reorder the religion in an ascending order uh, of the amount of TV that people in each religion watches? So we can use uh, the factor underscore reorder function to do this. Uh, this function takes three arguments. Uh, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, the first argument is uh, the factor whose levels we want to modify. So in this this case, we want to modify the uh, uh, factors, the, the the variable religion. Uh, that's that's uh, and we want to reorder the levels within uh, religion for our for our graph. And then uh, it takes another value x, which is a numeric uh, vector that you want to use to reorder the reorder the levels. Now. How do we reorder uh, uh, the levels of religion? There are multiple ways to do that. Uh, in this particular instance, we want to order them by the by the amount of TV that they watch. So we want to relevel the uh, variable religion by the average amount of TV that uh, people in those in in that religion uh, watches. Uh, so that becomes our x variable. So x is the numeric vector. Uh, uh, in our case, it's amount of TV uh, watched on an average, uh, and that is used to reorder. Uh, that is used to tell us uh, that hey, arrange uh, the level of religion by in in this order. Uh, and then we have an optional function uh, that can be used in case there are multiple values of x for each value of factor. So if we if we have multiple uh, variables. Uh, that we want to use to reorder a factor variable, uh, we'd we use uh, this optional argument here. But uh, to to start us off with a very simple example, we have uh, we have the same graph. We have uh, the religion underscore summary uh, dataset that we had uh, just mutated, and uh, we kind of uh, specify TVRs as our x-axis and uh, for y, uh, all we are doing is we are calling the factor underscore reorder function. So FTT underscore reorder, and we are telling the function that uh, religion is the factor that we want to reorder, and we want to reorder it by TV hours. Uh, and that's exactly what it does. It uh, arranges uh, all the, it rearranges all the levels in the religion variable in a, in a, in a, in a ascending order uh, of uh, the amount of TV that is watched, so that's that's pretty cool. And uh, the next uh, function uh, that the book talks about is uh, factor underscore relevel, and uh, they take an example of and factor underscore relevel is uh, a, a bit different from factor underscore reorder. So in reorder, we kind of change the order. Altogether, it was a new order that was created. Uh, Relevel is uh, a function where, uh, if we have uh, a few specific 
levels within a factor that we want to bring to the top of the line or or, or push to the bottom of the line. Uh, that is where a factor re-level comes into picture. And this is an example where, uh, uh, which, which kind of really illustrates the point quite well. So we create a new, uh, new uh, data set called our uh, income summary, where we are grouping by uh, income ranges, different uh, ranges of income. And we are again summarizing age and TVRs and N. So we have these income ranges of, you know, don't know, refused 25,000 or more, 20,000 to 25,000 and so on and so forth. And uh, we also have, uh, we also have uh, the average age, average TV hours, and the number of uh, cases in each of these uh, income ranges, so to say. Uh, when we do a simple factor uh, reorder and do it by, uh, sorry, uh, and, and kind of uh, arrange it by uh, age, uh, this is what we get. So we have uh, not applicable as having uh, the highest age range followed by, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, uh, the the uh, the levels in the income range variable are have been reordered here uh, in a descending order of of average age. Uh, so that 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 is good, but uh, oftentimes it doesn't make sense to reorder levels in ascending order of a particular variable. Here, uh, this graph makes less sense uh, because uh, uh, this does not have any order of its own. Uh, the 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 income range variable was was an ordinal variable. It had it had uh, an order of its own, and by rearranging or reordering it by age we have kind of messed with that order which which kind of uh, uh, reduces uh, the the uh, ability to inference uh, easily but uh, we can we can he but but however we can uh, argue that you know uh, let's say we want not applicable not to be on the top of the list we we want to push not applicable to the bottom of the list and uh, kind of retain this the rest of the order. So we want no order, no uh, no answer or don't know and refused. Uh, we want this order to be the same and not applicable to be at the bottom. And this is exactly where uh, this is exactly where uh, uh, factor relevel comes into play. Uh, and what we do here is uh, simply say uh, we want to. Uh, so if in our case of so the factor that we want to change the level of is the first argument. So we say we want to change or reorder the R income variable, and we want to put not applicable on the top of the order. So uh, here it starts with 1,000, uh, 1, to 3,000, 3,000 to 3,999. Uh, and we see that not applicable is something that has been pushed to the, to the top of the order. Uh, and uh, this could have worked if we had provided like a vector of uh, different uh, variables, uh, a, a vector of different uh, levels. All of those levels would have been pushed to uh, the beginning of the stack, uh, and the rest of the order would have remained the same. Uh, so that's another uh, neat function that we can use to reorder the levels. Uh, there are two more. Uh, the next one is factor underscore reorder two. And the example that the book uses is uh, to use use this to, uh, you know, color lines in a plot. Uh, so it's very similar to the factor reorder variable. Uh, the only difference is in factor reorder, we only had three arguments. So we had F, the function that we want to modify. Uh, uh, the the factor that we want to modify uh, x, uh, which was the numeric vector that we want to use to reorder the levels. In factor reorder two, we have another another argument for y, uh, and uh, what factor reorder does is to reorder the factor by the y values associated with the largest x values, and we'll we'll come to an example uh, to see how. Uh, so for this example, we use uh, we create another uh, 
summary data set of by age, uh, we first filter out the cases that are uh, uh, not applicable if we don't include them. Uh, uh, then we kind of count the uh, unique cases of age and marital status, and then we group by age and create like a proportion of people in that age group that are not married. So, for example, uh, uh, for example, in the age in the uh, age group of 18 years, we have 97 percent of uh, the sample that was never married, and maybe two percent of the sample that was married. And in the age group of 19 years, we have 94% of the sample that was never married and so on and so forth. Uh, so first let's see how uh, plotting, uh, I mean, or, or creating a line plot would uh, look like if we don't use factor underscore reorder. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty straightforward. We have uh, X uh, axis as age. We have proportion of uh, the sample in the Y axis and we specify the color uh, to be marital. Uh, so basically what it is doing, it's, it's, it's kind of creating all of these levels by the variable marital, and it's assigning different colors to each of the, each of the categories, each of the levels uh, in that variable. Uh, however, there's, uh, there's no order to, uh, to how uh, these levels were assigned. Uh, if we want to like have have better uh, inference uh, uh, or, or draw better inferences, what we can do is we can uh, specify the color by using the factor underscore reorder to function, where we say that we want to reorder the uh, we want to reorder the uh, variable marital. Uh, and we want to so the so the x in this case is uh, age and the y in this case is proportion. Uh, so what now happens is that it kind of changes the order in which uh, uh, the, the the different lines or the different levels of the marital uh, variable variable is coded. I do not fully understand how uh, how I mean uh, how it chose widowed over married over divorced. I mean, why, why did it pick widowed first and then married and then divorced? Uh, I would appreciate any any insights into this uh, particular function, but yeah, this is this is what it does. Does anyone have any insights into what's going on here? All right, maybe I can uh, look it up a little bit more and try to clarify this for our next session. Uh, but that's, that's one question that uh, I had on the factor reorder to uh, function. Uh, so moving on, the last function that we have is uh, uh, the last function that we have that uh, reorders the labels in a in a in a uh, variable is factor underscore infrequ uh, or infrequency, and this is especially useful when we are working with bar plots. Uh, so let's say we have uh, the marital status and we are plotting the number of uh, people that we had uh, across different marital state, uh, statuses. Uh, what uh, if we if we just use the marital variable as it is, uh, it would plot it in the order of uh, uh, in in the order of the levels that appear in the raw variable, uh, which might not be uh, you know really in any in any particular order. However, we can uh, use the factor underscore infrequent infrequency uh, uh, variable, and uh, what it does is uh, we can just call mutate, create a new variable, and uh, say that uh, the new variable is uh, taking 
taking from the marital uh, variable, but just applies the function of factor underscore in frequency uh, variable uh, function. And it kind of uh, first orders it in a descending order. And if we add the factor underscore reverse function to it, it changes the order from uh, you know from ascending to descending, uh, or, or from from in, in an increasing order rather than a decreasing order. So uh, yeah, these are the two ways in which we can uh, quickly and easily order different levels uh, of a of a variable in a bar plot, and uh, we also saw some of the other ways in which we can work with line plots, for example example using the factor underscore reorder to uh, or we can uh, re-level uh, a couple of uh, levels in a factor to move them uh, to the top of the list and we can also use factor reorder to uh, kind of change the order of a particular variable by uh, another numerical variable by the values of another numerical variable so uh, that is all about uh, how to change the order of uh, variables. Um, next week, we will talk about uh, how to modify the levels themselves. Uh, that's the third part of the section. And finally, we'll, we'll go through the exercises that are there in the chapter. Does that, does that work for everyone? That sounds great. Okay. Any comments, any thoughts? Arnab, what was the question for the rearranging in that plot? I just yeah. Uh, so my question was so this was uh, the factor underscore reorder to uh, function and uh, when we don't use uh, that function and we uh, simply plot a geom line, it picks, uh, uh, it kind of assigns different colors to different levels as, as we would assume. But when we do specify the color using the factor underscore reorder to function, it changes the order of uh, uh, changes the order of levels in the marital variety, but I don't understand on what basis. What mm -hmm. is it considering to change the level? They seem to be ordered in a way that the end of the lines are kind of falling in. I don't know if I'm, <laughs> I'm imagining it. So hmm. below it is like if you look at the right of the plot, below it is on top, and then there is married, and then there is divorce. Like the red, yellow, green are appearing in that order. Ah, I see. Um. I don't know if this is like I'm just by chance or is this what is happening? I was just trying to match the legend. Yes, I think the... it is taking the proportion at the last data point. Hmm. Yeah, could be. Uh, so yeah, because we do we do uh, provide these two arguments. We uh, ask it to arrange it or sort it by age and proportion and uh, the uh, the way that it works uh, in the book is, is uh, what they say in the book is that factor, factor reorder 2 reorders the factor by the y values asso associated with the largest okay. x values so yeah that kind of makes sense i think uh, so the largest x values, I think what Molik said was uh, the largest x value in, in our case x is age. So the largest x value would be, you know, towards the end of uh, the x axis right here. 
and then uh, we look at which level has the highest proportion uh, which is our second argument here okay that that make that makes sense to me yeah Yeah. I had another yeah. question. Like, what is uh, what is the use of this kind of factoring or reordering, where we want to see the, is it like time trend analysis, like two thousand nineteen? This is the situation, or what could be the use of this? So this, for example, this particular graph is telling us that you know as age increases, uh, proportion of uh widowed uh, folks increase the proportion of married folks uh, decreases um so yeah we can we can i'm, I'm thinking of other examples where uh, we can use this uh let's say we have I mean, a, a simple example would be of of this kind of a graph would be uh, let's say number of covid cases over time uh, and differently for different age groups or different levels for men and women uh, yeah. yeah okay okay huh. something like that yeah yeah that makes sense there is another use too uh when you come to regression model uh, i think uh, chapters 23 24 there also you will have some more uses hmm. uh for example if there are levels like uh, uh, ethnicity black white or asian kind of and then uh, regression model tries to uh, get the information uh, on average how much does white people get more compared to black in that kind of scenario you will have to uh, reorder or relevel the factors so that black is the first level and then the rest are uh, letters yeah 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 oh got it got it thank you yeah makes sense hmm. so so reference categories in uh, regression the first level is the reference category yes yeah 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 that makes sense yeah that is useful Thank, thanks, thanks everyone. I was kind of uh, not sure about what this function was doing. No, we can check it even for empty cars data set also. For example, when you run uh, LM uh, into bracket uh, MPG, uh, then uh, tilde dot data equal to empty cars. Give me a second. Uh... uh what was that lm mpg uh, mpg uh tilde dot uh comma uh, data equal to empty cars in this scenario uh you will get a regression model as if uh, uh, all the data i mean uh, for example cylinder uh, cyl this is also treated as numeric variable but if you change the df uh so that uh so uh, for example uh, cyl is equal to uh cyl is equal to s dot factor give me a second uh mute it yes cyl uh... is equal to s factor uh cyl and now if you run a uh, same uh, regression model using this data set mm, yeah see this the uh, level 4 of cylinder is the base level and now this uh, uh data factors uh, the multipliers of 1.6 uh, that is with reference to cylinder level 4 Right, and uh, MPG will reduce by one point six 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 percent 
compared to cylinder level of four. True, and I think what you were referring to earlier was that uh, 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 we can we can use re level to kind of have yes. PYL eight as a reference category instead of PYL yes. four. Right. Okay, so let's try that. So re level. Uh, sorry. SCT underscore re level, and we have psycho, and we want to specify CYL eight to be yes. Let's see. Ah, huh, that did, did not work. It seems. Let's say we do four. But we have not yet uh, created a factor variable first. uh it is a factor cylinder muted cylinder is equal to s factor uh cylinder and then we can relevel this factor level i think first we will have to mute it uh, cylinder is equal to s factor cylinder and then we can relevel uh yeah so we can do mutate cylinder to s factor or yeah this is the cylinder cyl and then this should work right Somehow does not seem to be working. Interesting. Okay, let's try this. I'm also trying just, here. Okay, let's just try to look at. Oh, I see. Okay, the levels are just four, six, and eight. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah. So, yeah, that worked. So we were specifying a different label. Yes. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, you were you were right. Once we specified eight as the new level, it picked four and six and and treated eight as the reference. Right. But yeah, this is also a great way to use re-level, I suppose. Thank you, Malik. Welcome. Right. Any other thoughts or comments? All right. Uh, from from me. Uh, thanks for the session, Arnab. Hey, I just uh, after our string um, strings chapter, I found a package that helps in uh, uh, making these regex expressions. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's uh, oh, I'm not wow. I'm not used it. I'm just uh -huh. uh, where is it? Just give me one minute. Let me find it. Where did I? Sure. I learn, I learn everything on Twitter, so it's. Yeah, Twitter is actually very useful. Let me send that on chat. Yeah. So, I just wanted to share this after our. Yes. Thank you. Um, it's called R verbal expression. So there is an example of how there are like more intuitive. Um, um function named function intuitively named functions uh yeah in this 
Yeah, I was also thinking, how come there is no package now for this? <laughs> many things about again. <laughs> um yeah so so arnab if you if because you're doing string analysis if you are yeah. end up using it please share with us if it was useful or what yeah 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 this would be very helpful yeah this this is really great thank you for sharing sure someone has commented great now i don't have to learn regex <laughs> <laughs> Yeah exactly this is, this could be very powerful <laughs> I also liked uh, this that discussion thread uh uh on that on 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 uh the question that uh was posted on the slack channel okay yeah, yeah. so that was really helpful too because uh, one of the functions that were recommended was uh r under bracket let me share my screen again uh yeah uh so r under quotes and then what whatever we are so 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 basically we have been using right lines yeah and then uh, the characters but instead of doing that we can use right lines r and then under quotes that thing so so that helps a lot i am yet to use it fully but it seems very useful so worth checking out interesting great hey did you get your vaccine sorry if you mentioned yeah that yeah 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 i okay. did <laughs> <laughs> the second the second dose was yeah we uh, both me and my partner were a little uh, under the weather uh, my partner got sick she uh, she got fever uh, mm -hmm. i am still doing better but yeah the second dose was not as Easy as the first one. <laughs> well, thank you for doing the session. Anyway, I hope you can rest it out. Yeah, yeah. I, so I, I, yeah, I, I did not work at all. So I, I took sort of a sick day, and I worked on this, which was <laughs> better than <laughs> working on your regular stuff. Nice. Uh, all right. So I'll see all of you next week then. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, thank you so much Bye again, everyone. everyone. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.